So that was Malal thing. Uh, I made some notes. Uh, uh, she thought uh, her, you know, she is Mala and I am Vela. That's not uh, quite true. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, so it's. Uh, I mean, it, it it was interesting. Two significant points I'd like to make. One is uh, uh, I never thought that you know one could uh, think, rethink. Uh, so th that that in itself is an interesting thought, and uh, uh, but the question is when we are cutting across sectors, we are cutting across models, and we are cutting across uh, intervention strategies. Uh, how do we uh, distill the principles of uh, uh, rethink, and uh, how do we uh, take it forward? And that that continues to be a challenge even after two days of deliberations. Essentially, because as we could have seen in most of the uh, interactions that we had after the presentation, we instead of abstracting from the learnings, we tended to get back into the details, including myself. You know the type of questions we asked. We tended to get into details of oh, how did you do that, and how did you do that, and what is the specific detail? Is there a Kannada language here, or you know the Teach for India question that I asked, and so on, rather than abstracting. And I think that is a much more tougher process, and I think it will take many more. Uh, such uh, interactions uh, for us to uh, arrive at that and say that okay here are the principles so it doesn't matter whether Selco has done it I can implement it in a Pratham books uh, sort of a context or doesn't matter whether it's Pratham books I can implement it in a Swatch context I mean so that's uh, th that's <coughs> the most uh, important thing but couple of things that were very evident in most of the presentations that came in one is it is possible to look at certain patterns uh, in uh, all the interventions and that uh, and and obviously those patterns need to be tweaked into the specific uh, thing. one one of course is uh, uh, the entire question of how do you scale or how do you uh, spread the scope i mean that's that's one underlying theme that uh, 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 comes across second is uh, we need to look at whether these processes are recurrent or a one time initiative and most of the processes that we saw are about organizations looking at recurrent processes and not one time processes. It is not just I will do it once and at the end of it there is a transformation and then life moves on. It is even when we are looking at a one time in a year process, it is a recurrent process every year. So that is that's something that came out I and mean, those are the places where we can draw some principles rather than a one time process. So that is that's something that um, uh, came out very clearly. And um, uh, the need for, uh, I think uh, while uh, the recurrent theme that came up in the discussions were uh, have we measured the impact and what has been uh, our you know intervention process i think more than asking whether have we measured the impact i think the right question at least in this context is to have we documented the process uh, and how, how are we going to roll out that and how are we going to abstract it i mean i'll stop here i think so Saro has a much more uh, elaborate uh, connections to make in this and uh, is he the next to speak? Yes. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Professor Shriyam. So, my, may I request Dr. Saurabh Mukherjee? Professor? <laughs> she is still not convinced. <laughs> you need to grow older. Yeah. What is this? How long can you remain, remain so young? Okay, so Professor Saurabh Mukherjee, the Dean of Programs at IIMB, to share his thoughts. Okay. So, you know, <clears throat> I was just thinking that social enterprises, the, the class of organizations is very new. And, and why I say new is because, you know, we have been in business schools and management institutions. We have grown up studying for-profit enterprises. And if you think of for-profit enterprises, they will have probably a history of what, about 150 years? If you think of, you know, the, the original studies with was US railroads and then subsequently we came to Henry Ford's organization and we have learned so much from them. But so, you know, obviously there is a need to study these category of organizations and in our own mind, we have to be very clear that are they very similar to a commercial enterprise with the social motive or are we talking about a very different kind of organizations and I would like to get convinced this about the second one. So, have, so hence I really loved what happened in the last two days that you know, all of you are problem solvers. I think in this room, probably I am the only one, apart from a few of my students, who have never done anything. And colleagues. 
No, but you have also been doing in this domain, right? I mean, I have never done anything for as a for a social enterprise, right? I mean, I have had industry experience, but those are all for-profit commercial enterprises. So I'm an academic, and and my job is to you know look at what is happening and try to abstract out something which Professor Shriram was talking about. And I know that you know Harish has been thinking about, I mean, telling about this in different places that most of the the academic thoughts which are coming. Are typically coming from the West, you know, which is a legacy which is out there for some very specific reasons. Whereas social enterprises is such an Indian phenomenon; it's it's such a developing country phenomenon. So we need the so-called desi academicians to you know, because his expectation is that we will learn about, we will relate to it much better. So that way, I think it's it's fantastic that you you I mean we have this <coughs> interaction between a few of us who are academics. And so many of you who are problem solvers, and I firmly believe that the ratio between academics and problem solvers should be in the ratio of one is to hundred. You know, so because too many of thinkers and less of doers doesn't doesn't help the world at all. Yeah. Uh, so you know that way, uh, you know, I, I'm very happy that this has happened. Uh, we are probably living with a lot of, I would say, uh, decent amount of chaos in the mind, right? I mean, I'm sure there is. A lot of open questions in your mind, as it is in our mind, and I think this should be the beginning of a process. You know, where we, with the help of organizations like Selco, meet more often, discuss, and try and see that what are the lessons we can we can learn about it. Very specifically, I I would like to think that you know all our <coughs> concepts of scale are coming from for-profit commercial enterprises, where we have figured out that scaling. You can only scale if you can standardize, right? So scaling and customization has a very strong trade-off. If you want to do intense, you cannot scale. That that's the given wisdom. It is not necessary that it will be the same in social enterprises, right? Because we are talking of very different kind of things. So I think the the nature of the product or service that we are talking about, are we in a stage where it is still Supply push, or where are we are able to do a demand pull kind of scenario? Is the business model inherently complex? Would we like to keep it very complex, or can we simplify it to some extent to replicate? I mean, these are answers which each of you will have to answer in a very different manner. You know, these are choices that you make, and subsequently we can realize that how we can scale them, or very consciously. And here, of course, I'm using scaling replication. Somebody said diffusion in in a similar term. And subsequently, we can think of what is the best way of doing that. So, I had a lot to learn in the last two days. So many different thoughts. So it was a very enriching experience for me. I hope it was for many of you also. Is myself, and therefore what I could actually share with you as reflections from the two days. Uh, I think where I'd like to start off was, I thought the idea of talking about replication. And how the challenges of replication across different sectors may actually have some similarities, and we can actually learn from them. I thought that was an interesting idea. So when I first heard about the workshop, I was excited. When I saw the canvas, which is a variation of the business model canvas, the question that came to me was: the business model canvas has a very clear output to it. The business model canvas is a way of poking your investor. It's a way of presenting your business idea in two minutes or five minutes and making sure the investor responds positively to you. And it's a way of you taking your business or your project idea and breaking it into neat boxes, which an investor understands. Basically, your businesses are far more complex. The investor doesn't have time, and nor does he have the sectoral experience. But yet he's the one with the money, and therefore you need to make sure that he understands what you're doing well and what is unique about your business. Here I didn't see that outcome of this framework. Yes, you broke it down into different segments, and then are you saying are there challenges which then <clears throat> match to solutions that someone else has got in another sector? And so some of you may not be aware that's what we spent the whole of last evening after you left. Trying to take all your canvases, putting down the challenges on one side, and then breaking it up into solutions that you have found out on the other. And what came about was very clear. A lot of the softer issues: how do you manage the customer? How do you manage the government? How do you manage, you know, how do you develop partnerships? All of which is 
cannot be put into a simple template were your challenges and the ones where you had found solutions was how do I come up with a template to measure you know this how do I develop a manual for my training so these are all much simpler issues which you can already put into you know a textbook or a manual were the ones where you had found solutions so what was very nice was all your organizations had got that sort of that side of it sorted. So you already need help there, and almost all of you had come up with the challenges which are very similar in terms of government engagement, stakeholders, other stakeholders, partnerships, etc. So somewhere the effort that we had in our mind that we would have some overlap, some similarities that we can learn from each other, kind of went out of the box. And then we had to think about how it moves forward. And I think. My own personal evaluation is, as a, as a facilitator in some of these sessions, I don't think we did a good enough job. I don't understand most of your sectors well enough to give that kind of input. And I think, therefore, that was our shortcoming. But what I see is that this is the start of a process of trying to learn from each other across sectors. And that's where I'm going to put it back on the Selco Foundation and the organizers that they have to make sure that they take what you develop as your activity map yesterday and worked on a little more today, that they actually put that all in a more systematic format, come up with areas where they think two organizations can talk to each other. Maybe you've already had that conversations because you all felt that there was that connect, but if not, can we start actually helping you make that connect with us playing the role of a facilitator? So somewhere, it's a good journey, but it's only the start and I think it's up to us to make sure that this is not just another event where we park it here, but we actually can maybe come back together in a year and say, hey, what started off there, we've actually managed to get some success because a TFI had enough lessons for a Pratham. For an, I mean, that's one example that I can think of. Or the Ahmedabad experience had enough lessons for Pune. Etc. So that's really where I'd like to leave it. And uh, yeah, I hope you had fun and we'd love to hear from you as well. Hopefully, we spend about five minutes getting reflections from the audience as well at the end. I think uh, the entire process of uh, engagement with Selco started with the incubation program. And uh, <coughs> once we were midway and uh, of the incubation program, um, some of us within the team started traveling and uh, interacting with the incubators. And when we traveled, we figured out that uh, there are a lot of learnings which are happening. <coughs> Sorry. A lot of learnings which are happening which can be definitely uh, replicated in other areas. For example, something which is working in Northeast can definitely be taken up somewhere else. And uh, that's where we thought and conceptualized that we can look at uh, replication uh, in terms of innovations, in terms of both processes and products. Some, the idea was that if you are catering to a particular market and if you see that there is a demand for a particular product which is not within the portfolio of that current firm, can they take help of some organization who is much matured and who are looking into uh, these products, basically outsourcing your R&D and then uh, developing that product which can be integrated to the market and which can add on to the value chain of that particular company. So that's, that's the point where we started and um, I think uh, the discussions that we have today, I think it's clear that uh, the transfer of knowledge or the transfer of uh, innovations can not just move from one uh, entrepreneur in Northeast to somewhere in Madhya Pradesh, but it's also across sectors. I mean, I was I was surprised to see that Mangal and Pratham. So these are associations which you do not think of uh, off the shelf, but these are happening. And I think now when we reflect and rethink, as the name of this conference is, um, there are so many things which can be replicated, which can be a particular part of the process which can be you know, integrated within a very different value chain. We don't need to reinvent the wheel once again. And for that, we need a platform. And we are lucky that we have an association with Selco Foundation who is doing this. And we hope that uh, this can be taken forward and maybe uh, clean, which is the off-grid energy entrepreneurs can also take it up uh, 
uh, and, and scale it up because they would be also in a position to interact with very different set of stakeholders um, and, and, and see how they can integrate this process. Thank you. year has been uh, quite uh, lively and exciting and we all uh, uh, actually especially I felt that uh, yesterday and today especially the group discussions we had uh, where we came out with especially in the morning I told that uh, we have been talking a lot about our program but breaking it into different uh, this thing was a new experience for me and we definitely enjoyed uh, this thing and we will take the lessons forward. We have to start thinking as to how we solve our solve. We have listed our challenges, but how do we find the solutions? We have to continue the discussions, not only uh, in the platform, that is in our own organizations and we have to find the solutions. Thank you. I had one feedback to share that um, if the yesterday's activity, which happened more at an individual level, uh, could have been done as a group activity. That was something I was hoping for. Uh, maybe if we had sector-wise divides or something, where there would have been more group sharing and learning. And then we could have selected one. That's what I had in mind when I came, because uh, we were specifically said that you don't have to fill it up and get it. Uh, we'll do it as a group exercise. So that was one thing. But um, apart from that, it was really interesting to get it, uh, I mean, have so many uh, different kinds of organizations represented here. And uh, uh, now I, uh, I was also uh, listening to uh, uh, Professor Natraj, na? uh, <laughs> what he said. <laughs> Now the tough job is to compile all this and it would really be uh, useful to have what we did and get your inputs on this as uh, maybe people who are um, theorizing and academicians, it would be interesting to get uh, some kind of inputs and what you said of also uh, linking us with similar kind of organizations uh, because uh, we've not had so much opportunity to meet all the people across the room. We have uh, replicated a few models from Serco specifically. So earlier what we used to do was we used to talk and implement things. So for us the process of documentation was not there. So that came out very evidently when we were asked to fill out the canvas. You know. So it took us again rethink on the whole process, like what are the steps to follow? If somebody else or even us has to read it, you know, uh, implement it again, how would we go about it? The challenge. So that process made us rethink again and if we follow this process, maybe we can be better prepared to, you know, re-implement it again. So, and again, seeing all the presentations, you know, starting from yesterday's Sarah's to today's, Mr. Bissuna, I was wondering, they have figured out so perfectly and we don't have the system. So this documentation is a very important part of what we do and it's not just what we do things done. So, so it came out very easy. So, yeah. Me, uh, I was uh, taking two words, which from, uh, two key words from yesterday's thing is, you know, uh, how to, you know, if it can serve two things. One is that customized to a particular need and, you know, and economies of scale, <coughs> how this can be combined together. And if I think what we in our organization have been doing, if I think, you know, think it from the academic point of view, something we have been trying to do the same thing. So in terms of the open source language, if I say that we are trying to create a kernel and, you know, which actually uh, can be, you know, can be customized to a specific requirement. So we what have been trying to do in terms of even our machinery as well as our operation is creating a kernel which can be customized to different flavors for different region. So that's that's a summary for me. The timing of the workshop was great because we are thinking of re re-looking at the PV champs model. Um, so I think also the tools that we used yesterday are really interesting tools that we can use to dissect every single project that we do because sometimes after implementation you don't go back and look at how the things have been done. So I think this is really important to uh, re-look at something and uh, dissect it and then see like yeah actually this is a problem area which otherwise you may not see it in the success of a project. So I think that was the important takeaway for me. I'm thinking about this because as an organization we scale first and now we are focusing more on customization. 
and uh, after the discussion that we've had in the two days, I'm just viewing scaling and customization as a more cyclical process, which goes on uh, across geographies or across time cycles. Um, just a feedback that I had to the workshop was, uh, one, I would agree with uh, what Professor Sriram spoke about in terms of our ability <coughs> to be able to abstract our learnings. And um, I think one of the ways we could have done it is probably not spending as much time on filling the canvas here and filling it in advance and spending more time on spend those two hours discussing within the group to just push each other to understand what our learnings were. So that would have been an actionable which could have led us to more insight rather than just discussing factual details of our projects. For me, the best part was meeting all these different organizations because we didn't have that this kind of chance before where so many diverse organizations were meeting together and i'm sure it is quite overwhelming now but once we go back we will reconnect again and there will be a lot of learning from each other and the second point i think i'll take home is what you say documentation because even within our because what we first see is only the challenges okay, that's what is the highlight in the mind but there are also many small steps in our work process that we have replicated knowingly or unknowingly. So if we just you know, put some of our thoughts on that and document it, and then it's there, and maybe then we can again focus on our challenges. So that will be something I'll take home. Thank you. Uh, for me, it's been a wonderful uh, experience, and I'd like to uh, take upon what you said that you thought we all didn't get answers to what we asked for. Actually, for most of us, I think just a bit of reflection and we'll see that there are lessons from each other that we're going to be able to use in our own, uh, in our own projects. And that is a really big thing because finally, we're all doing good work. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And we're all doing it as NGOs and we're all expecting the government to help even though we're saying it's not government non-government so somewhere we have to make the choice are we non-governmental organizations trying to do our own work our own way or do we need to get them to do things for us so i think that is something that we'll figure out and uh, <coughs> therefore it's been an excellent cross-pollination of ideas and i really happy <coughs> with here thank you from my view i feel uh, that, uh, it is generally said that problems always uh, come from corners which we don't look at or sources from which we don't expect. So understanding the business model or difficulties faced by each one and how they solve the problem or how they go forward uh, makes us uh, or helps us in understanding our problems better, applying their uh, mindsets. And it is also said that a well-defined problem is half solved and the other half, if it is a block with anyone, we can use it. So I think that's what I grasp. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to begin by saying that uh, it's been a fascinating two-day journey for me. I seek every opportunity to interact with Selho. I'm still trying to understand what's happening here that brings this remarkable, wonderful energy together. And uh, participating in this process of interaction will be really something wonderful. You know, my journey with Selco began five, six years ago when we wanted lighting for our new campus. <coughs> and that process of engagement taught me a great deal. And after that, I see the organization has moved on a great deal, the Selco Foundation, and I've been curious to find out what all is happening in the Selco Foundation. There is a rural, there is a tribal, and then there is an urban, and then there are land. And uh, at some stage, I even try to give up the whole sense of comprehension. The brain wants to hold on to something in a certain way. That's the process of education and learning. But incomprehension is a very good thing. Because it keeps the brain alive and fresh and still looking when you don't understand things fully. So um, I just like to kind of just uh, share some thoughts uh, with everyone. Uh, first, I thought it's very interesting that my journey as a teacher has uh, led me to think of the student not as a recipient, but.
but as a participant in his or her own education. And this has been a shift and it has taken time to understand and digest and implement in its own way. And I, if I were to look at the social sector which we're speaking about, I think the big shift seems to be that to move from you do not know and we will tell you to I know what's good for you. And from the big shift that seems to have happened is you know you have wisdom and we believe this can lead to good solutions. And we are going to engage and work, uh, not necessarily seek the credit for what you discover and what you do. So I think there's a lot of giving away, and I think that's very interesting. Though the other thing that I found a little interesting and somewhat daunting is that the language seems to be almost entirely business language. You know, so but uh, it was tinged with the heart, with human feelings. And uh, this was very evident in the conversation, even though uh, I balk at this business language a bit. And, uh, but at the same time, I found that the grounding was the, uh, the human contact, the human difficulties, the situations that people face, the challenges that they meet. And uh, <clears throat> the intention in the uh, social sector, I think, is rather clear not to exploit. But in the business sector, I think that intention is not that clearly stated. In fact, if the more valuable you are, probably the better it is. But here it's not to exploit. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm saying something which is politically not correct. Uh, so okay, that's the season. Thank you all of Not to exploit, but to empower. And it's a fuzzy zone. We don't know exactly what to do. Uh, uh, what I found really rich in these last two days was the atmosphere of a lot of respect and wanting to learn, even though people are speaking from so many different sectors. I myself found it very rich to listen to the stories, the successes, the terrific rewards of all the um, different sectors and many of the organizations I did not know very much about and uh, in fact knew very little about. So it was very rich for me to listen and I, and, uh, I make a process comment. I didn't see one yawn in both the afternoons. It's rather unusual when people get together and very lunch, nice lunch is given. And you don't see a single yawn. That's really unusual. You know. So I think that speaks about the quality of engagement, openness and uh, interaction in the dialogue. So um, I think this has been a time when um, Probably we were uh, articulating to ourselves what we've been doing in our organizations and probably what we intend to do in our organizations. And I'm consciously rethinking this whole thing in the light of the many reflections. I think you put it very beautifully. I don't remember the words. But I think in listening to other experiences, there's a certain reflection which happened. And I think that happened. Uh, and we spoke about deliverables very strong business language, but very interesting that we also spoke about beyond deliverables. Uh, that was very rich and very, very valuable that we spoke about atmospheric things, things which are not tangible, which can't be held, which can't be tied down with just a few words. And uh, of course, the uh, one of the most interesting things for me was to have this fascinating conversation with uh, one of the Selco Foundation people, Ranak, I hope you don't mind my mentioning this. I was asking him, what do you do? And he told me what he does. And I said, oh, his role, I believe as I understand it, is that whatever solute things people come up with, he can't say it's not possible. And he has to help them make it happen. Ah, I said, what a delight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. One of the people say you construct your own meaning out of it. And he told me a lot of things about financial model, this, that. But he also told me the one thing I'm not allowed to say that is not possible. I said, This is delightful. 
Mm -hmm. Actually, somebody told me, somebody can actually play the role of this kind and have a role of this kind. And I told him, I'll come back to you, I have a problem. You don't want to tell me anything. I always think you have to think you back to that. We need you. No, no, this was, uh, this was a statement of very deep appreciation and value that I gathered uh, in the tour meeting. And of course, I'm delighted to see the room full of energy in here. And for me particularly, it's a treat to again make contact with the newer faces in Selco, meet some of my old friends. And also uh, wonder at how this whole thing has happened. So I'd like to say for creating this opportunity for a lot of unconscious learning, I'd like to thank Selco Foundation. And uh, for being brave enough to actually conceptualize a meeting, a gathering of academics, of people from different social sectors, cell copy, and people like me who I don't know by what yardstick I qualify to be here, uh, social sector or whatever, but still to, to conceptualize something without hard deliverables. And I think to find a way of valuing this and uh, giving it significant meaning. I, I think just the very engagement, I, I'm not so sure that people across so many different areas of work have met together like this. I don't know if this has happened at all in this country or anywhere else, I'm not so sure. Maybe Harish may have some other thoughts on this or something. But I've never heard such a thing happening. So I'd like to thank everyone for a very rich experience. Thank you very much. And thanks particularly to yourself. Because in the last 24 hours, the number of email exchanges that he has had with another group, we have had a crisis. I actually was surprised that you were here actually, looking at the emails that I got from you. But may I say also that I've had a double crisis. My Chennai is flooded, my flight is cancelled, and my campus has got knee deep water. <laughs> so I'm managing that as well. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, the other crisis. Multitasking is. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, I've, uh, um, uh, how do I start with that? Uh, first, I apologize for missing, uh, which we've been thinking for some time to have. For a reason that was, um, uh, for that was, I just could not cancel it, otherwise I would have uh, been on the wrong side of the Ministry of Renewable Energy, which I didn't want to be at least for a, for a day. Thank you so much for, um, uh, for having this, because this is what we were thinking for quite some time, that uh, the, and it also was uh, strong to the event that um, yesterday in the India Pavilion in, in, in Paris in the COP, the first three hours of discussion was exactly the opposite that you have actually had here. <laughs> so it basically pushes the theory that why we should have this because for two and a half hours when when the whole push that Government of India was doing in terms of sustainability and our role in, in the world in terms of climate change negotiations and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, and then we're going to do 175 gigawatts of solar and then we would have this whole new innovative solar center in Gurgaon, which 120 countries would participate in everything else. In the first three hours or two and a half hours in India delegation was whether sh should, we, should we be selling solar at 4.56 rupees a unit or 4.58, I'm not joking. Yeah. <laughs> that was the discussion, the whole discussion was on the panels where private equity guys, uh, uh, multi-millionaires uh, in terms of, uh, from different businesses, and, and some government officials and, and all they were discussing what should be the grid parity of solar that should be sold in India. And so it was all about how do you sell solar stuff and what is the, what should be the uh, job of government of India to how to relax the custom duties to, to everything else. It was nothing about what are the end services for the 700 million people at all, at all, absolutely zero. It was all about how do you scale up production in terms of solar panels, but nobody talked about what would the solar panels actually do, what would people actually do with the electricity energy that they would actually get, whether it's doing it, nobody, none. It was two and a half hours of pure, how did, first hour was a debate and on the history of how did the tariffs actually came down from 9 rupees per unit to 4.456, and then I brought people who actually were innovative in what an Excel sheet to, <laughs> to bring in and how it will actually go down and the questions that were asked also saying that is this aggressive quotation or is it passive or is it going to go further down. No talk of the poor, no talk about energy access, no talk about uh, what are we going to do. So, so I think we have a much stronger role to play 
that we have to push those elements in many ways because it's all about again in terms of in the name of the, for the business in the hard case and, and also the question the, the, the language that was being used yesterday was obviously below 20 percent nobody else will be interested in. Oh. Yes, please. Well, it's all Indians talking about Indians. It's all about Indian Indians Indian. talking about Indians. That's so sad. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's so, so, so it was. It was about. So, I think that's where uh, I. I think it made sense, and we had the so-called last session as a as a token on energy access, uh, and then for an hour and a half, and. And the primary player, which was very disappointing, which did not was not there in the audience, was CII. Was the CII, the conference, which was actually arranging the conference in many ways, right? Which showed the importance where CII was laying on uh, on the negotiations and how the negotiations will proceed. So I think more so uh, the criticality. Whenever the, the first thing exactly the debate, just as much or is ke beech mein jo debate ki seva or उसी के कारण हमने ये वर्कशॉप लगा था कि हम ताकि स्वच्छ एंड जो सेवा है काफी सिमिलर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन से हमारी जो डिबेट होनी चाहिए नेक्स्ट टाइम इस स्वच्छ एंड सेल्को के बीच में या स्वच्छ या प्रथम के बीच में और एंड आई वुड आल्सो रेकमेंड कि व्हेन व्हेन यू व्हेन वी आर डूइंग होपफुली वन थिंग दैट कम्स आउट इज व्हेन वी गो बैक इफ देयर आर प्रोजेक्ट्स और प्रोग्राम्स दैट यू वांट टू डू कैन यू एक्चुअली ब्रिंग इन एज अ टीम प्लेयर समबडी एल्स फ्रॉम दिस ग्रुप दैट टुडे यू मेट Somebody way out from your group. Whether it's Pratham Group is looking at a one-year program, can you get somebody from my housing trust to actually think? And just, I mean, it's it's something that can push the boundaries of thinking uh, very, very differently. And also, when uh, so that we'll have a, the real cross-sector learning will not happen just we debate today. Can we be open when we are all saying we are open source? Tomorrow, if Seva uh, Mahila Housing Trust is actually looking at a kitchen upgradation program, or even looking at their initiatives of sanitation and everything else, where education is an issue, or or the type of articulation, can Pratham Books be part of that project formulation? Okay, that if after a year we come back to who, what is the collaboration? See, normally the collaboration we talk about is in a similar sector perspective, but I think we need to break that. From otherwise, see a lot of the learnings that we have learned is from whether it's a water sector or even like our light for education program is what we learn from the midday meal scheme. Like why do kids go to school because there's a hot food. Here the kid goes to school because they can light, he can charge the lighting. So I think if we can actually do that. And secondly, your point of uh, and documentation. I understand that it's very easy to say we should document everything but when you go back tomorrow you will be in your fighting. It will not yeah. happen. It is not going to happen. But I would, I would ask uh, Shara actually if the first year, second year students can actually help some of these enterprises get documentation. One, it's a two-way process. One, you get a good document, but also for the younger students who rethink of what they are document. Where you force, if it, even if you, I know they would, <coughs> that the only incentive for them is to get a credit, right? I mean, ninety percent of them. If you can actually make it a case of of part of your credit in your own course, that they will have to document some of the enterprises which are less than one crore a year. And compare because at one crore, it's very sexy to write about case studies who are multi crore, Starbucks or anything else. But less than one crore has much challenges. The documentation will leave behind a lot of stuff for them. I think, and I am, if, if you do it, I am in Door might follow, I am uh, in, uh, in uh, Assam might follow. In the sense that, can we have that process that they get the free resource of because they will not have the time. Tell you, you tell the same thing into 2020 20, and write it as you will. Right, I agree. With you. So, so I think it's 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 if some of the institutes can actually be serious enough to look at sub crore companies rather than just looking at uh, that could be an output of, of, of one of this. So yes, when we uh, when when uh, 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 people were putting up this whole uh, workshop, we were we all use this buzzword uh, reinventing the wheel, fit second But I think it's we will keep telling that. But it's high time we learn from each other. Because otherwise, as somebody statistics Times of India or somebody else, I know because it's Times of India, I'm hesitatingly telling you these uh, these statistics that every NGO for 536 people and a police spent for 900 people, right? So, so how do we break that? So can this small group turn into and hopefully this workshop gets replicated by other people from looking at the funder, uh, CIZ and USAID, 
that we replicate such type of cross earning and, and then is there a pool of money that funders like you and I don't know whether Viswajit is here. Yeah. Yes. Ha, sir. Uh, if it's a pool of money that is kept aside and USAID kept aside for people who come with a unique project between Pratham Books and Seva or or Dave and some other, is there where we obviously there has to be authenticity in the project. Is there a cross sectoral project that we can actually think about? And so we push the learning and so also more teams get uh, allocated between if, if, if that we can do. We can absolutely take the lead of thinking about it and at least implementing uh, uh, at least one before the, uh, one or two in the next one year to make sure that it can happen uh, from a Selco Foundation perspective. And that's the whole goal of Selco Foundation being that open source platform. So anything I would also, please don't look at Selco Foundation just being an entity that's actually doing this workshop one way or the other. Please look at an entity which wants to bring the whole sector of the needs and furthermore it scared me after yesterday's uh, <laughs> meeting um, and that's, I'm glad I went because I, otherwise I wouldn't have been scared. Because what I read in the newspapers today is like mission innovation, I don't know if you see mission-innovation.net that the Prime Minister released, it's about innovation, which is exactly the opposite that they spoke about yesterday in the, in the, in the, in the, in the meetings in many ways. So I hope, I hope uh, we take this forward and Hari, uh, also to your point, we will but also the foundation has been thinking for some time because of the new CEO of Clean coming up. In terms of you, so we will have a stronger collaboration with uh, Clean to do what uh, um, uh, to do, and so I, we will pass on your information to the new interim CEO of, of Clean. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. So yeah, so I, I, I hope. I mean, I don't want to take you guys. Have had a long two days, but. Uh, the process of thought process of replication was that we, there are extremely from water we, we copy a lot from water to energy we can copy from the midday meal scheme as I said we can cross just that we if couple of us three or four of us in the each team if each organization actually puts our mind in what are the process rather than today what happens is rather than a whole criticism for us was that oh Selco did not scale up Selco did not do this but the whole philosophy for us that we did not want Selco to scale up. We hopefully that certain processes of Selco, somebody would criticize and take it forward. Certain, like if some, if Dave came and said we want to do Selco, it's not possible because the, the type of organizations that we work in Karnataka is with mature financial institutions that he doesn't have. But are there parts of processes that he could actually take and reconfigure it to what he, has, he, he or she is doing? And that's that. Hopefully, uh, 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 and, and this is hopefully we do this in a much, much this may interactive. But also, let's be a little more concrete in a way where we start doing programs together. And that's where the actual success will start happening, rather than just these workshops where we come and we learn on a canvas, etc. Yes. Also, first I would like to thank uh, uh, actually Shanti for holding this up in many ways because. Uh, Uh, along with her uh, day job, we also have actually a person in the office who who says has which are the projects we shouldn't take to Rama. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have this. Uh, also, want to speak. It's been incredible that a lot of the speakers who came, uh, like unfortunately, couldn't meet uh, uh, the ones that have uh, Samir and Shushmita whom I did want to meet. Satyan and Hari, thankful for actually doing this. And uh, you know, in Delhi, somebody said. Uh, when he was chosen as the interim CEO of, of Clean, said that now we might lose one of the best sought after moderators in the energy access <laughs> area. That's, uh, that's the uh, branding that he has got. Um, Sriram sir, up to, I mean, and also, it's not, I'm not joking, he's releasing a book, uh, which is going to be. Uh, yeah, no. he said he was finishing a novel. That quick? <laughs> After this, <laughs> he's got enough material here. <laughs> uh, and uh, Vinaji actually for coming all the all the way. Uh, Gautama always always an inspiration and and and, uh, and somebody who who knows how to tackle crises uh, 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 very well. Uh, you have no idea. He's, he has handled in the last six months one of the toughest crises uh, of another nature of another organization, which I. 
bleep it out because of government of India reasons. Uh, but he's handled incredibly uh, well. Um, thank. Uh, it's. It's. Uh, I hope. I hope you take something. But more critically, we uh, we make sure that we do something because I, unlike other conferences and workshops, please, if if nothing is happening, please tell us that you guys did something that is of useless nature that nothing has happened. Uh, the feedback for you, for frankly, frank feedback should be after one year, not today's feedback. Is was it actually made any sense when we talk in December? Uh, 2016, uh, uh, because it's yes, we all come and go, but hopefully if this sector has to really move forward, um, and there are people literally thinking that the 700 million people are a are a market, uh, which is which is crazy, uh, which is not going to solve the especially a problem that ours. And look at what is happening in Chennai. If people are not serious enough, What's happened in Chennai is a repeat of what happened in New Orleans in many ways, many years ago, for different nature. The uh, same thing happen is happening. Uh, we, we need to be very careful. And who are the more, everybody today in the news of Chennai is looking at, okay, was I got saved, I got saved, and we all get messages on WhatsApp. But more than 40% of the people who are living in the slums, we are even not talking about, because they are going to go back to abject poverty. Lot of the other people are going to lead their own lives as soon as the water goes back. But there are 40% of the soldiers. people who were in the poor are going into abject poverty. They have lost everything. I think it's something how, how the sector gets together and creates a safety social net for all the 700, people, 700 million people is going to be very, very critical from us. The so challenge for us is not only from the climate, challenge is not only from the policies. Policies is something that we can influence, but the challenge is going to be from the hard private sector in, in, in many ways because um, how do we, it's not that they are wrong, but the fact is they don't know. So it's very easy to say they are wrong and they don't know, but it's somewhere we need to bring them onto the table and make sure that they understand why we are saying this. Today we are at loggerheads with different people, which is not correct for us. How do you bring them into this inclusivity? Like today when we talk about inclusivity, we only talk about the other side, the poor as inclusive. I think we also need to get the, the private equity guys as an inclusive so that they start understanding others. We cannot afford to have discussions that we've had yesterday in, in COP. Thank you so much for doing it uh, and, uh, and, and hope we come back in a year uh, with much more concreteness than what we, I mean, we've done a lot here in two days, yes, but now let's do with something on the ground. Thank you very much.